So while I'm waiting for this side to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and to this side and add uh, some very light pencil lines. So I'm not pushing hard, I'm just going to um, do some very light lines. Let me find my pencil here. And, um, and start drawing in my, my little birdies. Let's see if... So I'm going to start again with that oval shape that we talked about um, in the last painting. So, um, not oval shape, cup shape for my little bird here. And then on the top, um, just kind of rounding out his head and then going up and to a point here. So the shapes of the flowers are pretty similar to the shape of your little bird. So I'm gonna go ahead in with his beak, the triangle, and then making it into a diamond like we did before. Giving him a little eyeball that's right close there. Um, and a little wing. And he's probably gonna have some sort of flower that's that he's sitting on here. And then I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna do another birdie. I'm gonna have him facing the opposite direction as the first bird, going around and then down again. So the same, the same shape, he's kinda gonna be looking up. So wherever you direct their, their beak, you know, you could put it up towards the top of the head, you could put it down towards the bottom of the head, However you direct it, you know, whether it's down here or up here, it's going to be based on where this bird is looking. Had I put this down here, he would be looking down. So I want this bird to be looking up. And then I put his little round eye just directly across from that beak. So this guy too. Same thing. Then I'm going to give him a wing here. And I'm going to give him a flower that he's sitting on, kind of a tulip shape I guess um, and then I think I'll do a third birdie here that's a little bit smaller so that that cup shape and then up and around and down to the to the um, tail then I think I will give this guy a, a beak that's looking down and then a little eyeball here And then I'm going to give these stems and then we're going to do kind of the same thing we did on the first one. Give it a little leaf, stem down, a leaf, and the stem down, and then this one's going to have a leaf coming, or a stem coming through the sky. and how that is. So they're sitting in the garden kind of like our last little birdies. <clears throat> um, let's see here. What do I want to do with these guys? I think I'll do some more flowers in this direction over here. So I'm really looking at my painting and I'm trying to decide what is going to make it um, have a good composition. So that's something that's really important is just to kind of look at the whole composition of the painting and, and make a decision about what you like best and what you think will carry people through the painting. Um, if I add some more pink over here, that's gonna kind of carry you through, you know, um, just make decisions like that. <clears throat> so always looking at your painting and, and making decisions about it based on what aesthetically you think is um, beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead in the eyes and the beaks with just a black 
pen. You have to be really careful when you go around these eyes now. Once you use this black pen, you have to realize that this is gonna bleed if you're not careful. So that's just a warning. So you could always just do it at the at the very end. That's probably the best way to ensure that you're not gonna have problems. I just feel like when they're looking down, they look kind of sad, and when they're looking up, they look happy. <laughs> I know it's winter here. I'm sure that it's not in some places. I'm pretty sure in Australia that it's sunny. Um, but I'm just over winter. So that's why I'm doing these spring paintings. I'm just kind of, I've had a rough winter and I'm ready for spring. I'm ready for it to be sunny outside. Right now it's about 30 degrees outside. I'm getting ready to go to sunny California, so I'm excited about that. It's raining today there, but I think it'll be okay tomorrow, and it'll definitely be okay when we go to Disneyland. <laughs> but um, I'm just ready for the sun, so that's what I'm trying to give you here, is a little bit of sunshine and not so much rainy, gloomy weather. So um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead over here in this corner and kind of work with the flower patterns again that we talked about. So let's spray this corner with water here. And you might overspray and get some on your birds and be afraid that you're going to get pink on your bird or something like that. And I just want to encourage you that um, that's okay. Because with watercolor, that's kind of the thing with watercolor. So I went back into that really bright pink color and I'm just going to lay in um, some paint here and kind of let it do its thing. So I'm not even hardly doing anything to this paint. I'm just letting it kind of do its thing. I'll probably go back in once it's dry and give it some more um, definition. But right now I'm just wanting it to be loose. So that's the key here. So I mean I know a lot of you are perfectionists and you want it to be just right but the most important thing to learn from this and one of the really fun things about watercolor is that you don't have control. So it's a great lesson um, in our own lives. So I might just even go here at the bottom of my little corner and add just water and let and see what this watercolor is going to do and see if it wants to kind of move down in this area and just kind of manipulate the watercolor a little bit. Um, but you know, one of the best things about watercolor is just letting it have control. You know, sometimes we want to have control in our lives, but really, you know, God's the one who's in control and, um, watercolor is a great lesson for that because it kind of paints the painting itself. And that is one of the beauties of it is that, um, it's, it's doing its own thing and we're just a participant. We're just seeing what, what is happening and we get to, um, play a role in that. And if we never lay the paint down, of course, we will never see what's going to happen in the future. So you are a participant in the fact that you, you get to have, uh, part in the whole process, but you, um, you also need to let go when it's time to let go and when it's time to just let the beauty happen and to watch it happen. So you do get to pick the colors sometimes, but you don't always get to pick where they want to go and what they want to do. All right, so we have some pretty patterns going on there in that upper corner. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead down here at the bottom. I'm going to add some water and wetness here at the bottom, but I'm not going to spray it this time. I'm just going to kind of um, put a line down there. I guess you're not seeing it. So I'm just putting a line down there with my paintbrush. This is just water. I'm not using any color at this time. This is pretty dry over here, so I'm 
I'm no longer very worried about what's gonna happen with that. I'm gonna add less water as I go up. So I'm kind of um, pulling this water up here. So it's pulled, you know, there's like a pool of water down here and then it's less water as I go up because um, that the less water there is, the more control I guess you have. But um, so I just added a little bit down there and I'm gonna go into some greens. Um, I love the green gold, so I'm going to go ahead and start there. Um, it's a very yellow, organic-y, um, I don't know. It's a weird green. I don't think everybody likes that color because it's kind of a weird green, but I'm not going to just use that straight. I'm going to layer some colors up on it, and then I'm going to go ahead and just move it so it... So I'm letting my brush just kind of move it up a little bit, just using some water here just to kind of get it to, to do some stuff. So I'm kind of wanting it to look like grass and so I'm, I'm manipulating it a little bit. So I'm just putting little lines kind of, but not perfect lines, not like what your mind thinks is grass, but just pulling it up and letting it, and letting it do its thing. And I kind of don't want any hard lines in there. So if I see a hard line, I go back in with, um, my water and my brush just to smooth out that hard line because I want, with watercolor, I don't want, well, at least in these parts. In the birds, I'm gonna want some hard lines, but in these parts, I want it to be really loose. So now I, now that I have that yellow in there, I'm gonna go in with some um, sap green and some olive green. So I'm kind of mixing them together on my palette. So I've got a wet brush and I'm just kind of going over the olive green and going over the sap green and mixing them together. And then I'm just going to go over top of that yellow. So even though the yellow is pretty warm, um, green has yellow in it. And so uh, it's not going to make mud. It's just going to make it more of a yellow green. And I'm just putting this at the bottom and I'm letting it do what it wants to with the other yellow. So I'm not covering everything that I did in that yellow. I'm just adding green to the bottom and letting it mix on its own. I'm not mixing it. I'm letting it do its own mixing. And then again, I might go back over with a with a relatively, so a damp brush, I might go back over that and kind of um, play with the water at the top here and, and um, get it moving and get it to do what I want it to do a little bit. But I'm trying really hard not to overdo it. Make sense? So I'll go down real close here so you can really see what the paint is doing. So can you see what it's doing? It's just kind of blending in together in some places. And um, I think it kind of just gives it a, a wild flower, wild field type of a feel. And it's okay if it goes on top of something else or it blends in with something else because this is a painting, it's not reality. So it's important to give yourself that freedom. Okay. Alrighty. So since I'm letting this all dry, now this is really important, you need to let in between areas dry. Since I'm letting that dry, I'm going to go back in um, to my little birdies and I'm going to think about what colors I want um, them to be uh, and what colors I want to use there. I am going to go in here a little bit. It's kind of got to stop there and I don't like that. Um, so this top birdie here, I think I'm going to do them in blues. Um, and I think I'll use this uh, teal color because I love teal. And I didn't get the bird wet 
first this time. So, um, I don't want, I don't want my watercolor to go past this line that I've already drawn. So that's why I'm not adding water there because wherever the water is, that's where the, the watercolor paint is going to go. So I'm just going in, I'm going around his eye. Like I said to you before, it might be easier for you just to draw the eye in after. Um, and I'm just going to fill in his whole body. If you go outside the line, that's okay. I kind of did there and I don't care. Um, so you're just going around inside of his whole body and filling it in with this blue color. And even if you cover up the black in the eye, that's okay. Alright, so that guy is going to dry. So I'm not going to do anything else with him right now while he's wet. Um, this little guy, I think I'll just stick with um, the blues. So I think I'll go into this um, blue color here. can't read what it is. I'll show you. Um, so it's this, this color right here. Um, it's a green, it looks like it's a green, blue, or a aqua. That's terrible, right? <laughs> I should be able to tell you what I'm using. It's just a mess. But I really do want you to use whatever colors you want to use. So I think that using your own color is important to just put your own personality into these. So I'm trying to get around the lines. I'm not going to get it perfect. Um, you could use a smaller brush if you want to. If you want to get it more perfect. But part of, like I said before, part of watercolor is the impact, imperfections. That actually makes it look better if you make it less perfect. If it's not a perfect filled in area, if there's little watermarks and little uh, craziness to it, then that, then you've been successful. Okay, so with my third bird, what do I want to do with him? I think I'm going to do a purpley blue with him. Um, I might go into my purple and not blue that I just did with that baby down there, so... I'm going to go ahead here like this. And just fill it in. One of the things you could do is, um, this one's really dark at the top. If I go in and I stop there and I go in with just a wet brush, just a watery brush, I can just go along that line and carry it out to the bottom and use that looseness that I told you about with watercolor. And just, um, and then more, just add a little bit more water and, and, uh, keep going around that wet edge. You want to make sure to keep that edge wet. That's one of the important parts. Um, go along that wet edge there and, um, that gives it kind of some neat effects too. So it's not so perfectly uniform. It's kind of, um, messy and you can even pull, like I'll pull some of this color out here. Um, I can go, one of the things with watercolor you can do too is you can take your dry brush and you can, uh, you can pull color out. You can keep pulling it out to lighten it. So instead of adding white, you're going to pull color out, um, to give it some lighter areas. And that's one of the fun things you can do with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and let those birds dry there. And I'm going to go back in over here to um, my flowery area that I was working on. And I'm going to give it some more definition. But I'm not going to be too crazy about it. You know, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to look at it and think, I'm creating a, a rose. This has to look just like a rose. I'm just creating flowers. The viewer's mind is going to decide what kind of flowers it is that I'm creating. 
but I know that roses kind of, or flowers kind of have a, a, a swirl pattern in the center. So I did kind of a line here and then a line that's not touching it here. And then another line underneath there and just maybe like a little dot there, you know, maybe a, a line that's right here. So I'm just kind of, again, giving more illusion that there's, that there's a flower here. I might make a petal that's heavier on this, this one here. Um, you know, give it some darker pinks here in the center. But when you're looking at flowers from afar, you're not seeing every little uh, detail on those flowers. You're just kind of observing some shapes in there. So flowers are really just based on a bunch of shapes and that's what you're observing. And that's what I'm trying to give you here. Just like those things on Facebook where you see the, the um, sentences and you have lots of different letters in those sentences and they don't make actual words, but you can read the paragraph. It's because our mind knows where to fill things in. And that's the same thing with painting. Somebody is gonna look at this and they're gonna fill in all the details. You don't need to fill in the details for them. You're giving them an illusion. You know, illusion that there's a flower garden here, an illusion that there's, you know, bees flying around and, and birds singing. Um, I think I'll just do like a little leaf shape here, you know, next to that flower and maybe a little leaf shape here in this area. Some, you know, stem shapes, maybe some that are going off the page so you, so the viewer kind of knows, you know, maybe I'll do something over here where the viewer kind of knows this goes on. You know, it goes on infinitely, it goes on beyond, I can add some green shapes uh, over here in my corner area and some a little bit of stem stuff going on I'm gonna add some darker shadows over here in this um, corner area like I did with the other flowers here. So same thing, you're kind of making a, you know, they are kind of a circle pattern, um, the flowers, you know, but it's like you're looking on the inside of it and there's just shapes that are kind of forming a circle, but not a perfect circle necessarily. Maybe some are in a U shape. So you're just being loose. You're not going crazy here. Um, I think this guy is pretty dry, so I'm going to go back in and do kind of a loose flower under him. And if the pink gets on him a little bit, that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead with this. He's a little bit wet, so he might get some pink bleeding into him or some blue bleeding into this flower. And um, that's a good thing too. So not a problem. Yet again, with the tulip flower or, you know, rose, whatever you want it to be, um, you know, just put it in there. You could put some little shapes in the background if you want. So, you, so you're having the idea of flowers back there. It's up to you. Um, one of the things I like to do is to take that color that I'm using and just get it really wet in my brush and just tap it. So I, my finger is kind of up above it and I'm just tapping it and I'm letting it um, just kind of make dots and shapes in the background. So I'm just giving it a little bit of um, texture and dimension. I might do that again with the green, but I'm going to let the red dry. I can even tap it with some water here so that they, some of those bleed out a little bit. So 
the most important thing here is that you're having a lot of fun and you're really enjoying your process. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry for a little while because it's all pretty wet now and we'll go back in and do some finishing touches. <laughs> 